Howdy. Hey everybody, it's been Tony. Oh. It's 2022. It's Daytona. Daytona 500 has happened. We watched it. I hope you watched it too. If you didn't watch it, we'll give you a rundown. If you did watch it, let us know your thoughts. I'm Brandon. I'm sitting here with my colleagues. Go ahead and say what's up. Go down the line. What's up? That's Vito. Oh. Hey, it's Chris. What's up? That's Chris. Yeah, it is me. Me, Adrian Cooper, Adrian the legend Cooper. himself. He's back. Look at that, man. We're all back. We made it back. We actually made it to not only the clash, but the first race of the season. Um, that's, that's crazy. That's better than we did last year. Let me tell you. Um, two in a row. Two in a row. It's crazy. Two in a row. I'm keeping the streak. Three in a row, technically. We've actually updated the set a little bit. Um, we got name tags. Cause Y'all know who's who. Now we all know who's who. Yeah. Now it's not just the voice. It's a name on a tag on the desk. Um, yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna we're, we got we got we got a little bit of technology going on. We're getting a little fancier, so we're gonna see how that goes throughout the show. But got some money from the uh, the Poland Spring Company. Thank you, Poland Spring Waters, for the money. <laughs> Very Did cool it. bottled water product. Also brought to you by the country of Kazakhstan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round of applause! Yeah. Thank you, us some, yeah, yeah. Oh, love and support <laughs> out to our uh, lovely supporters out there. Um, the Daytona 500 happened today. Yeah, it did. Oh, Let me tell yeah. you, we got a we got us a, a rookie winner, rookie Austin Cindric. winner, Austin Cindric. Going yeah. Crazy, man. <laughs> Won it in a photo finish with Bubba Wallace. I'm sure that'll. Guess, um, oh, I guess we can use the fancy thing now. You ready? Watch this. This is gonna be awesome. Get a load of this shit. Get a load of this. First segment of the show. Cindric wins. It's on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> figuring shit out a We're little bit. We're figuring it out. We're getting a little better at this. But yeah. Anyway, Adrian, you you walked us into that. So, um, yeah. Today we saw. I, I mean, we saw. We saw a good race today. I ain't gonna lie. I loved Damn good it. Race. I loved every minute Damn of it. it we actually great. got some good weather for once. That was a nice change. Crazy. <laughs> good weather. Right here. I think, like, I f- honestly, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think 2016 was the last time we started at the start time and it just ran to the end. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long and, time. Uh, yeah, there was the weather was great. No threat of rain. I think it was, like, at worst, a 1% chance. I think, I think what we saw, the highest number I saw was 5%, and that was earlier in the week. So, yeah, it was yeah. a beautiful sunny day in Daytona. Packed house. I mean, the place was full, which was good to see too. One of our buddies was out there watching the race. He could attest to that one. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the wide shots of the grandstands and the infield, and then on the back street, like we had people everywhere. It was really cool I to think see. Those that were all people. fake. I think no one was there. <laughs> no, I think no holograms. one showed up. Nobody was actually there. It was all holograms. That's what the, it's all CGI. It's what they want you to think. Yeah. <laughs> So I think NASCAR's actually gone bankrupt. NASCAR's gone bankrupt. But back on the topic of interest here, Austin Cindric, the two yeah. car. Literally yeah, his like first it. race in the two car. We were I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I was like, man, Cindric's really good. I've grown to like him a lot in the Xfinity series. I'm excited to see what he can do. I think he'll be all right. His first season should be okay. He should maybe probably make the playoffs. We'll see. It'll be close. Dude wins his nope. first race in the 500. Yeah, he's kind of swinging. Dude shows race. up assuming... in Kislowski's two car and wins the 500. And I'm assuming he makes the playoffs because he's a great driver. He's going to finish in the top 30 in points. I mean, yeah, this... I, I, I see him winning more this year. He didn't. I think this is yeah, just a why. one and done. I, I see him again. winning again later this year somewhere. That is yeah, not winning Daytona at least two more times. I have a little. I have, I have been winning, winning a road twice. course. I mean, this but, guy's a like, beast on a road course. We all picked him to win on a road course. We didn't think he'd win the 500, and here he comes. Yeah. But it wasn't like he just plopped in there and won it like McDowell did on the last lap last year. Like, no, this dude literally controlled the field all day with like Ryan Blaney and Brad Keselowski. Like those three guys, they just had this thing on lock all day. Yeah, seriously. And it came down to the three cars of Ryan Bellini, Brad Keselowski, and the winner, Austin Sindrick. Yeah, it was a, it was a good race. Everything worked out great. Speaking of uh, Big Bad Brad, his replacement oh, beat him. His replacement beat his ass. His did beat, beat him. But, I mean, yeah, like, Sindrick killed it, man. Like, on top of it yeah, all day. Phenomenal. Did yeah. great in the dual races, qualified well. I mean, he just checked all the boxes. 
going to deliver our first hot take of the season. I think not only does Cindric have potential to win on the road courses and obviously the plate tracks, I think we may see Cindric win on just like, you know, your typical like oval, like Las Vegas or something. Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. There's nothing holding him back. I mean, you got to remember, he's driving the Pinsky 2 car. It's not like he's yeah, in it's lack a of good a car here. I said this to rookie Brandon, and I think I said this to Brady. If I had to guarantee a rookie's success, and I could choose one rookie, I would like ever. It would be Austin Cindric. Mm-hmm. No, the kid had a lot of potential coming in. I didn't doubt him winning a race. I just expected the five hundred. I am virtually certain Austin Cindric is going to be great. I mean, just, hindsight, I kind of should have because Penske's always good at the plate tracks. Like yeah. Penske guys are always on top of it. I should have maybe counted him in a little bit more, but uh. Awesome job for that. Last kid. year in the Daytona 500, two Penske cars were in were up front on the final lap. This year in the 500, two Penske cars were up front on the final this time lap. They didn't wreck. They almost did, but they didn't. Lady, couple Lady guys did after the line, wreck. Penske cars. I mean, they're coming to the trial there, and I saw Cindric go up the block, and then they made contact. And in my mind, for that split second, I saw the two car going into the wall crooked and the damn 23 car stealing it with no left front fender or right front fender oh, whatever man. Like, like that would have been crazy shout out to Bubba Wallace he drove his he drove the wheels off that car today I was really, yeah he was I'm top honest. five all day he was up there kid, like you gotta give him some credit that was a pretty beastly drive because right behind those Fords out front there was that one damn McDonald's Toyota mm-hmm. yeah, all day. First yeah and that, and that M&M's car through. behind him too Kyle Busch was pushing him the whole way yeah no the two of them locked up and they were a force on the outside in the yeah. last 20 laps I was very impressed, especially Kyle Busch, man. That guy was just giving everybody shots. He was just like, I'm more going. Much credit. Yeah, Kyle yeah, Busch needs a lot of credit for this race. Like, that was just another photo finish. I think that's like the third, like, you know. Yeah, in, in a row, know, at least. Like, Bush 20... had some fucking holy intervention that I – to miss this every single wreck that he should have been caught up in. Finish, 2016. Yeah, I mean, between Kyle Busch and David Reagan, I don't know how they kept their cars clean. Oh my all the way God, the David Reagan. Reagan, man. Then after the, the check, Kyle Busch made him. it out okay, and David Reagan absolutely annihilated that car. But you know what? Mm-hmm. He made it to the checkered top 10 for the 15 car. <laughs> oh, the job is a Rick Ware guy. Rick Ware there. car finished in the top 10 today. So um, anyway, I guess that kind of wraps up our thoughts on the quick little Cindric win. We can um, mm-hmm. I think this is a good. Really good I'm talking about, about wrecked it. cars. I think this is a good segue into our next segment. If you want to go, uh, are y'all oh boy, go ahead in there. I, I think that's headed to our next segment. All right, I'll bring it in. Don't you worry. We're gonna bring in our next segment. Kiss Plowski. What was going on today <laughs> with the six car? That was a man on a mission. This dude. man, I think he wrecked about three different people that caused chain reaction like incidents. I think he maybe three, out. might have been two. I don't know. He took out Burton. He took out Stenhouse. He was not. He played no games today. He played no games. And it's funny I considering him being the most outspoken. I'd say for people doing Brad blocks, he kind of did on the inverse. Did I mean he wrecked as many cars? But instead of blocking people, he just was like, "You're going around. Goodbye." And yeah. that was the end of that. Well, the fuck out of my way. I am winning this race. Final lap. Yeah, was that was a man on like, mission. He walled Briscoe, tried to like left rear or McDowell, and then took out Reagan, and then he wrecked on the final lap. And, you we know, just, the, early, the early incident of Mr. Burton. Oh, boy. The early the incident big, with Burton. Big shove. We'll get to that. Then we had he, the freaking. We got Stenhouse. Um, we got the, yeah, we got the Stenhouse wreck. Uh, and then just overall, I don't know. He was just – you could tell. Like, we we saw a side of Brad Kozlowski we haven't seen in a long time. Like, 2014. He was Brad Kozlowski. Like, he looked – like, we got to see bad Brad. And we hadn't seen that in a long bad, time. Bad, bad man. He was a to bad see a side man of Brad Kozlowski that desperately wants to win the Daytona 500. Like, he's got to win till next he's, year. He, you know, he's coming in here with, I own the team now. I got to make a name for myself. I got to sell sponsors on this car. I got to make this team competitive. What's a good way of doing that? Winning our first outing at the 500, a race that I really, 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 really want to win because I haven't done it yet, and I'm like the statistical god of plate racing right now in our era. So, you know, it's like I feel like he's got that on like his that on his shoulder, you know, like that like that chip. Yeah, exactly. It's, his, it's right there, like. It's just like I probably just nags at it. It's like, you, but you can't. You haven't won the five hundred. Granted, I think what he has seven plate wins total. In yeah, his he has career, seven plate wins, but only one of them is at Daytona. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he Daytona's not always been Vega. his strongest. He he runs well there, but his finishes don't have it to back it up in terms of wins. 
because he's got six at Dega. But, I mean, I can see where he's coming from and why he drove so hard today, but it got a little excessive, and there was a good amount of cars that would probably like to have a word with him because it ruined their Oh, team. Ricky Stenhouse was pissed. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, he was mad. Stenhouse, Stenhouse was, mad. was really mad. Um, I mean, we even got some beef out of that because he called him out, and he was like, yeah, and then the car that he left just went and won the thing. So, you know, throwing a little shade. <laughs> Yeah. Um. But yeah. Anybody else want to chime in on their thoughts about Kisplowski? I don't know. I was happy, yeah. honestly, that Brad was running as hard as he was, just because I was rooting for the six car all day. I've been rooting for the six car. Well, all I mean, yeah, weeks. like we all had the six car to win. Yeah, um, I was just like, man, this except for man, Vito, I'm getting behind, behind this. We were all like, yay, hey, yay, Briscoe. I'll be honest. Not, I was no, rooting. Hey, fucking uh, six car, you're gonna win it. And now we were, and then we were watching the race, like, damn, son. <laughs> Look, he's here. He's cause another one. Why don't you? <laughs> I was rooting against Brad because even if I wasn't right about Kevin Harvick, which for a minute it looked like I would be, and then he got wrecked by Kozlowski. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Busher. No, that was, no, that was uh, he checked up for he checked up for Busher, and then Larson got into him, and then yeah. went around. Yeah, for a second I think I was going to be right about Harvick, and then uh, he wrecked. Yeah, but uh, I was just rooting against Brad pretty much all day, just so that you guys would be wrong. <laughs> I wanted you guys to be wrong. Even if I wasn't right, I want you to, you all to be wrong. Which we were. So, we're. Um, centric. I don't have anything else to note about Kislowski, but uh, Brandon talking kind of reminded me of this. This is, I guess, I mean, he wasn't in uh, Cup last year, but kind of the two in a row for Cindric on season opening races at Daytona because he won the Xfinity. You That's know, true. Daytona mean? race last year. Forgot about that one. Yeah. Speaking of people we uh, we wanted to win also, uh, you know, it's no secret. I'm a big Michael McDowell fan. Uh, I, I consider myself a Michael McDowell fan. He was, yeah, he was, he was, he was him good. And yeah. Gil, I were. really wanted him to go double down. He was there he all right race. up in the air in the end, though. It's typical Michael McDowell fashion. They're coming to the end mm-hmm. of the plate race. Lo and behold, here comes the bright yellow loves car. Yeah, man, like, yeah, he never right gets in the too. wreck. He always just has He's it always going right, right there. in the end. But to that Gillen point, really I gotta say, Gillen ran an amazing race today, and them wrecking with about what fifteen to go there. That was sad mm-hmm. because they yeah, had a but... really good race going today, and that good finish got ripped away from them. And they they were they were gonna finish in the top ten. I'd say they ran in the top ten for the whole second half of the race. Him and McDowell alone, like they weren't even like really running nose to tail. Whenever the field got side by side, because like one would be on the top and one would be on the bottom, they were just like running up in the draft together. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I got I got high hopes. I think the thirty eight car is going to run better than it did last year. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think it would anyway. Cause, you know, Gillen already has more experience That's than what Alfredo. I'm did. Gillen's definitely a more experienced driver than Alfredo. And going off today, granted, it's Daytona, but this yeah. Daytona race was different. You had to actually kind of show you got what it takes because not only just on equipment but you had to be right on your pitch strategy you had to be right on how you picked and chose your battles throughout the draft because we saw cars go laps down today you know you mess up your pit stop it's over dude you're going to lap Mm -hmm. down we had i mean we got to about 20 like we about that halfway point and we had 20 cars on the lead lap that's half the field Mm -hmm. that's numbers that we see at like a long green flag mile and a half race that front pack was they were they were scooting and they were if you if you got if you got if you lost the train cars. see you later you know what I mean yeah they were hoping the stage breaker we get a yellow because you're going lap down dude shout out to the Biff sixty two laps down their bumpers on these cars are much more rounded so you can't just like shove it in there with like you would be able to on the older cars because you will wreck and we saw that a couple times with Mister Kids Plowski just kind of going gung ho into the guy in front of him causing him to get loose and obviously wreck and but that, I would say that has to do with more of these like the rear bumpers being as rounded as they are yeah you need to hit like square on the back bumper or else that car's going around you gotta yeah, it looked like Brad a, did you just nail him. square it did look Brad like Brad good... hit square a couple times and they still went around so yeah. I think that's a good segue into our next one yeah, you uh, so. Harrison Burton let's Ooh. talk about Harrison oh boy Say, you know, man, that like, kid flew today. He yes, so they is not Harrison Burton on the screen. Try as they may. There, I fixed it. I got the wrong. We grabbed the wrong. Now one. it is. Try as they may, Nestor wants to eliminate the blowover. 
Burton flies. Uh, new car. Harrison Burton blows over in the first race. <laughs> and learned how to fly. It was a little baby blowover. It's nothing like we uh, saw, which we'll talk about later in the show. But uh, a little baby blowover. Uh, he almost started tumbling. Once he came around back on the wheel, so he almost got enough grip to start like tumbling. That was that would have been uh, nasty. But he didn't start tumbling. Just kind of blew over, came back on the wheels. Denny Hamlin probably shit himself. Got a great view of that uh, with his uh, onboard camera. Yeah. God. He's running a good race too. He was, yeah, I mean, he was up running to that a point, really good race. Coming to the end of the first stage, he was running really well, and he'd run real all weekend, like in the draft, yeah. uh, just in practice, and especially in his um, dual race, he ran really well. So, you know, it happens. All three rookies it happens. You're right. You know, all, all three Daytona. rookies and Fords, All three it rookies. They both obviously handled their shit really well. Sin- or Burton was doing good until he wrecked. Gillen was doing good until he wrecked, and then. You know, Cindric won the thing. Oh, uh, man. This race, I feel like Cindric already locked himself into Rookie of the Year winner. Probably, unless someone else uh, wins mean, a race. I mean, who else is a rookie this year? Gilliland and uh, Burton. Okay. Unless <laughs> they win a the race. Is I like mean, yeah, he's, he's going to – it's – it's yeah. I think Cindric I mean, is pretty well set for Rookie even of the Year. Even then, race – I On mean, race he won one. the Daytona 500. Oh, uh, I feel like – is rookie of the year that'll carry a lot more weight than like oh well, you rookie won of the year it. is determined by just who's the highest point. my points yeah. and if you make the playoffs yeah. you get a huge points gap so unless yeah. they make the playoffs and beat him in the playoffs that's a done yeah. deal yeah exactly i think i think so. locked in as a oh, rookie of the year yeah. all right is that pretty much i mean we, there's not really much to say there the car spun it flew it rolled over one time came back on its wheels I mean, it was crazy to see a flip, though, honestly. Like, I didn't think we were going to see a yeah. flip. I didn't think we were going to see a flip. We didn't even see a big pileup, really. There was that one yeah. uh, moderately sized, sized wreck, and that was it. Got the mid one, not the big one. Yeah, we definitely need to see the big one. Yeah, the big one didn't happen. We had a couple little ones. Mid ones though. We had a, the, mid, the mid one. I think that's fair. Yeah. Mid one, yeah. I think the biggest one was when... Uh, it was, was that? When, yeah, when Harvick spun, or maybe when Stenhouse too. That's I got a couple cars. You want to talk about that okay. next? You want to move into that? I guess Maybe so, right? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Okay, let's get the action. Uh, let's use it for real this time. We, we, man. we got a little preview. We got a little preview. There it is. Spin house. Uh, what happened, man? House. Well, I know what uh, happened here. Uh, In his defense, we like to call the Recky Spin House mantra that goes on the internet relates back to his 2018 demolition derby at Daytona. Now, in yeah. his defense, yo, you good? <laughs> yo, who, who fell? <laughs> Vito, Vito's down. Vito's Vito down wrecked. on stream. Vito's wrecked. down on stream. We gotta bring oh, out the shit. yellow. He wrecked. <laughs> Put him in the infield <laughs> care center. Vito, are you alive? It's oh. uh, <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right, Vito's back. <laughs> oh, not yet. Oh, not yet. <laughs> Second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. Like Harrison Burton for a second. <laughs> God damn. God damn. God damn. God damn. God damn. I'm alive. I lived. Stenhouse. All right. Stenhouse. Ricky Stenhouse. Ricky Stenhouse. Yeah. Oh, oh. man. That, that hurt. Yeah, I mean, but back to what I was saying. In his defense, yeah, that did hurt. In his defense, he drove. He's been he's been clean since then. I'd say he's had a few instances, but his his he's aggressive when he needs to be, and he's calmed it down and has run really well at the plate. He's really really good at the plate tracks when he's not hitting things. Yeah. So he's a hell of a plate racer. You know, he's always gets his way to the front. He always finds a way to be in contention. Until the wrecks happen, he usually gets caught up in them or causes them. But he hasn't 
that 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 like mantra that's been on him since that one night where he did a Brad Kozlowski tonight and just wrecked like four different like he caused like four different pile ups. He ran really clean today, like the cleanest race I've seen out of him on a plate track, and he did so well. And he put himself in the front by himself, just running as a single car team, just a little Chevy team, and the sea of Fords basically drove up to the front, put himself in contention. And then got spun out by Brad Kozlowski. So, yep. yeah. rightfully so, and I would say he's justified in being a little angry. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Like, everybody can jump on him and say he's hypocritical for, like, calling him out for causing a crash, you know? Because it's like, ah, bah, 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 you caused the de- demolition derby, you know what I mean? But, yeah, but he's been clean, and he was really clean today, and he did nothing wrong today, and he got wrecked. So no, he was the big story of that at the race at that point too. Like when he was up front, it was like, "Hey, look at it look at like, hey, this out. guy's really race. good, and he's really quick right now." The little Chevy that good. Yeah, and then he was yeah, really wrecked, so it just kind of fell apart there in the end. Well, he don't got any manufacturer allies, no teammates. He's got nothing, and uh, he, he was up front. Him. Yeah, and big man Brian. Big they sold bad their, uh, bread with his got in the way of Brad's bread. wrecking ball of a car, and it's all it's all of it. It's all she wrote. So that was um that was kind of yeah that was that was the sin house story heartbreak for the forty seven team yeah. I say because they they put on a hell of a drive in the end there, and mm-hmm. um that's just the way she goes you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is the turning of the page. Maybe Kislowski. <laughs> It all came full circle. He got back to he got to Daytona. He started cleaning up his act, and then he became the victim of his own creation. <laughs> now he will be a changed man entirely and win again. I don't know. <laughs> I like to stay out again. Some some sentimental shit, you know. Yeah. Anyway, What's anybody next? else got any else right. for Spin House? No. So. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring up our next talking point. Um, The one of the talking point of the week, the fast forwards. Jesus, they Uh dominated this week. And that show did. They got them illegal wheels, though. (laughs) They got them (laughs) illegal wheels, though. Man, yeah, Ford's no. top of the yeah, charts Ford's all week. Ford was ridiculous. Like, I remember laughing at one point in the race when we were all watching it, and I was like, because, <laughs> um, one of the buddies in the car was, man, he was like, on the, we were all, we were sitting there watching it, and he was like, yeah, that's like that, man. The four is first on race day. And I was like, and second, and third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth, and seventh, and eighth. Ninth was Ty Dillon in a Chevy. <laughs> and then they were 10th, 11th, and 12th. So the first, like, <laughs> The, the first 12 cars were all fours except for the one lone Chevy in ninth. And I was just like, wow, they really are fast this week. Yeah. The Toyotas had a good plan. The Toyotas had a good plan until they started wrecking. Yeah. The, the problem with the Toyotas together. is that there was only six of them, and then there was only like three of them. Like, and then there was two. So by the end of it, there was only two. They only have six total, and then it was down to two. And Those two of ran a hell of a race. Cannon. But yeah, it would have been, been nice to have the 11 with them. Yeah, no. I mean, think about it. There was six. Only two of them made it to the end, and those two both finished in the top five. So Yeah, so, exactly. Kurt Kurt Kurt's tactic was drive as a team, but Mr. Brad Kurt Kuzlowski and Truex said, both finished. Uh, uh, I don't remember where happen. they finished, but I remember them getting involved in one of those like later incidents, so that kind of set them back a little bit. I don't know where they actually ended up yeah, finishing. Yeah, Kurt just kind of sat there in the back for the rest of the race. He didn't really get to do much after the oh, uh, after that wreck. He got caught up in I'm talking I mean, like serious contenders because Hamlin was up there, Bell was up in there, they both DNF'd, you know. So yeah, there was that one point when it was a uh, Kyle Busch and Bell at the beginning of the race. They were pushing each other and they were mm-hmm. way up front. Like, like they Bell were they were really running with early on until they had the part failure. That was also a part yeah of the incident. So Hamlin mm-hmm. got in the big the Burton flip. Yeah, Kyle Busch did too, but he made it out and salvaged a decent finish out of it. Martin Truex, hell of a race today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two stage the, wins. The Fords were just on top of it. Yeah. If it wasn't uh, Cindric leading, it was Blaney. And if it wasn't Blaney, it was Kozlowski, Busher. The RFK cars were yeah. flying. RFK. And then you had, like, hanging out in the rest of the top five. Like, Harvick was there for a little bit. Almarola was there at the end. 
Uh, McDowell ran fun? there at the end. Eric Jones was there for a little bit. He was well, he's a Chevy. Eric Jones. That's a yeah. Eric's a story. Right, yeah, I, don't I, don't, I want to talk about weird. him a little later. Yeah, I don't mean just mean like Ford. I just mean like you know Eric Jones was there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was so I ask you this: Do you think we see this trend continue into the other tracks of the season, or do you think it levels out once we get off the big? I don't know, because I do remember earlier this year NASCAR mandated the Fords make a change to the car, and they looked really fast on Speed Weeks. This could carry over. Like that, we could just see Fords keep winning races for a little bit. But do you, what do like you it, whether it's is that a Toyota the six car, the twelve, point? the twenty-two, any of those guys. I think that Kyle Busch is going to win next week, but I'd like to see that. I would really like to see that. I would not be surprised if a guy like Logano or Harvick like, won. Or even Blaney, you know? like Blaney, yeah. It's all the Fords right now looking good. I only I ask I because guys, I'm a mixed bag. I don't know. If I had to pick two guys, I'd pick the two guys that have been pretty damn impressive at Auto Club just because those are the safer bets, Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson. Yeah, but... but- I won't put it past. You want to go in the Ford camp? Logano and Harvick are kind of your guys, right? Yeah, and they're if Penske specifically is undefeated, unless you count the duels. Yep. In which case, I mean, yeah, Who counts the duels. I mean, Ford's and think about it this way: Ford is undefeated. As long as you don't count the heat races at the Clash, Ford won the Clash. Yeah, because Logano Ford won the Clash. The I mean, RFK and Penske have won everything there is to win so far. Yeah, like it's. Like the only yeah, we had Logano win, win Blaney. Ford at the clash. Then we had Kislowski the RFK win his sweep duel. and the duels. Then we saw Busher win his duel. But think about it this way too: <laughs> Who are the? F- there was four cars in the end of duel two that were trying to win. There yeah, was and Harrison it was the Burton and at the end and of duel Ford, one too. Chris Busher in a Ford, Joey Logano in a Ford, and then Michael McDowell in a Ford. It was just Fords across the board everywhere. But the end of duel one was Kislowski, Blaney. Cindric and Briscoe. Again, all four. Yeah, another all four, just plethora. So. Hey, we didn't really talk about Briscoe. He finished third. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. Briscoe made a hell of a drive today. Considering he spun too early on, he had like one or two incidents, especially the. I mean, he was the first caution of the day. Yeah. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit, though. I'll bring that up later. Funny notables from today's race once we get around to it. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's kind of it for the Ford. Just. I don't. I don't know. Um, it's too. I think it's too early to say. It's fun to predict, but I think it's too early to say if we'll see this really transpire into yeah. the future of how dominant they will really be. We're gonna have to get a better sample size because you know it's Daytona still. You gotta remember, Daytona is just a super speed complete crapshoot compared to the rest of the schedule. So, uh, yeah. So I don't know. It was cool. It was cool to see them run well. It was very they, cool. They struggled last year, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely struggled Relative last year. Relative to Toyota and Chevy, they definitely fell off their pedestal a bit. Mm-hmm. Was it right, relative to Chevy or was it relative to Kyle Larson last year? Chevy. <laughs> My answer is yes. Most... Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, you want to go ahead and move into the next segment? Yeah, yeah I think so. Right, what do we so, got? Um, yeah, pretty much it for our uh, segments for the race. Uh, the new package, def- you know, not just the next gen car itself, but how it raced on the super speedways. Um, I'll go ahead and just start off. And I'll say it did. I was. This was some of the most fun I've had watching a plate race in a long time because, yes, the last couple years of the Gen 6 there where we just went full downforce, full psycho in terms of pack racing, it was really fun, but it was also really annoying because getting the field that close together, it was just like the last 15 laps, we have massive pileups, and everybody's involved, everybody's tore up. The guy that wins the race has Bondo all over the front, you know what I mean? It's like... Raining blood starts playing. Yeah, you know? basically. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it was a... T- like, you want to say it was a total crapshoot? The final races of the Gen 6 at the plate tracks, granted, they were fun. It was just, like... A total mess. Because... Yeah, I think the yeah. best example of that one is... One thing goes around, everything explodes. Kurt Busch about hits the flag stand type beat, you know? So... Yeah. yeah. I Granted, the it was really fun, but the racing today made it feel more like racing. You get what I'm saying? You had to nail yeah, your exactly. pit stops. You had to nail your strategy. You had to have drafting partners, and you had to know how to work with your drafting partners. Is it good to pass right now? Do I really want to risk losing this draft train I'm in? Because I might have to pay a pretty big price for it. 
I want the inside or outside line. Yeah, which fucking... lane is moving? Do I give up on my lane? Is it worth it to give up on my lane? You know, things that we've always seen that are a big key part of plate racing, that's nothing new. But today, it meant a lot more, I'd say. Like, it really meant a lot more. You could see when two guys were linked up good, you could tell that they were controlling the field as opposed to everybody else. I say that looking at the two car and the six, the two and the 12, the 17 and the six. Like, these combinations of people, the 23 and the 18, especially in the end. It yeah. was like, yeah, the when you had a good drafting awesome. partner, it wasn't a full-on 2011 goodbye tandem draft, but it was, yeah, we're good. Join the party if you want to go with us don't join the party and get passed by us. That was kind of the vibe I was getting. Today and wasn't Cindric versus Bubba. That was Cindric and Blaney versus Blaney. Bubba and Kyle. Yeah, and Kozlowski. Yeah, it was just... Brad like, it was. Uh, it felt... It was just nicer to me because it put more on the teams themselves, both on track and off track. Like, you had to have a good car. You couldn't just have a solid car and get in the draft and make some fuckery happen. You had to have a good car. You had to know your car. And more importantly, you had to know how to time your runs and how to, you know, like, it just put more emphasis on everything. Because you could tell, like, when cars weren't getting, to, like, when the separation was not there, or when the separation was there and cars weren't linking up right, they were definitely paying the price for it. Like, look at the beginning of the race. The first five laps of the race saw Kislowski stack up the outside lane and just drive away from Kyle Larson on the bottom. Their bottom lane fell back to about 18th. You know what I mean? Before, yeah, they left but at the start but they didn't give up on it and they linked back up. The outside got a little broken up. The separation started to form in the top. The bottom got really compact and they drove all the way back up slowly but surely to the front of the train. So, you know, it's it was a good balance. It felt very old school to me. Like, going back and watching the late 90s, early 2000s, 500s, especially the late 90s ones, like, from what I've, you know, going back and watching old races, it looked a lot like that to me. And I think that's, I mean, going off what everybody says, people want that era back. Here it is, you know. <laughs> it was a very good example, I think... I'd say. I don't know. I've been going for a while now. I want to hear what y'all have to say. What do y'all think about the new package? <laughs> I think this package perfectly. The race was great. One of the greatest Daytona 500s I've ever seen. I would say arguably top 10 all time. Um, it was a great race. The package worked great, which is why halfway through the Gen 7 era, NASCAR is going to change it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we, we had a really, really good start with it. It was a great race. Yeah. I'm really uh, hoping they don't change a thing because this worked great. You know, I liked uh, how intensive it was on having a good car too. You couldn't just bring an okay car and be at the front all the time. No, you needed to be on your game. You needed to bring a good car. You needed to be good at driving it and know what was going on. So that's why you saw guys like the six car up front. That's why you saw the two and the twelve because they brought the best cars and they knew how to drive them the best through the pack. Yeah, and I said this before we went live, but this package has me very excited and also scared for Talladega. Mm-hmm. Why scared? Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. We're gonna, I, I, think, I think we might flip again. <laughs> I don't know if we might, we might flip again. There's a chance. I said a car's going to disintegrate. It will disintegrate at Talladega. I mean, that Jake <laughs> your guy on YouTube, he makes all those crash compilations, and you always have your like flips in like the top five. We already got two in the first yeah. weekend. Yeah, we already so, got two flips. Like, they're both I don't think done flipping. We still got three more of these things. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, do we really just have three? Atlanta's on the horizon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and we do have Atlanta. Oh, God. Oh, I didn't even think about Atlanta after watching the racing this weekend. Oh, oh, oh man. No. Okay. This, this package, this package, you know, what we saw, it, it really, really likes linking up hard on bumpers and drafting like bump drafting yeah and if we're gonna have to bump draft at that level through the quad oval <laughs> oh man we can see some chaos first into the wall again type shit hey yeah shout out to byron <laughs> smacking the wall and the car looking yeah. not that bad yeah, yeah composite body it's a head-on hit it held up pretty all right Dude nearly found the himself to make he hit that wall so I hard. Mean, he hit the wall hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the while, there's a car flipping. See, we didn't even know there was a flip. Yeah, I'm so focused, focused on, on Byron. Byron. And then Clint, 
You just hear Clint saying, oh, I Can think I someone flipped. A, and you- I'm going to add a segment here. We're going to segue into that because I think we got the package across. But yeah. this wasn't even on our, like, little prompt. But, um, oh, God. Let's, uh, let's do a little. Like, this is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Fox. Fox. Oh, no. Fox. Yeah. Guys, yeah. What, what was that, man? What was that? The advertisement about? 500, baby. Dude, I think they, like, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I think they, like, dropped a NASCAR race in all my commercials. I was so confused. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, guys. My favorite what part the... is, like, my my favorite part actually was the wreck where they're like they're showing William Byron and Clint's like I think I think someone flipped and at first you think it's just a Clintism where he's like crazy and then it's like no someone no. then they go to the replay and there's like a whole other pileup going on and all we saw was a bumper cam and then Byron sliding to the inside and all you thought was oh Kyle Busch and Byron got in a wreck. And then they're like, anyway, no. here's the replay. Hamlin's in the wall. Three cars are spun around. Harrison Burton is airborne. <laughs> like, yep. how did they miss that? How many cameras are down there? How did they miss that? Speaking of uh, Brandon, Kyle Bush, William Byron again, huh? Yeah, they're, they're inseparable. You just can't get those two apart. Uh, really man. One thing, well, I think my favorite Kyle part. Kyle Bush and William Byron were together. I think my favorite part is when they were about to cut the commercial and then Reddick wrecks. Yeah. Like the commercial just starts and you see Reddit go around, so they have to immediately cut the commercial and go back to the broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think nice. if it was up to me, I think they should just go NASCAR nonstop for the whole time they need commercials and advertisers. You either are okay with that or you're not. Yeah. I don't know. We got a TV deal coming up for 23, right? Yeah. I think so. Can God, we just, can, oh boy. We, can we move into the modern day? It's not 2002 anymore. It's 2022. I don't know if you watched a Formula One broadcast. They don't have ads. <laughs> it's flag, uh, flag coverage. What about the money? You know. Yeah, but like, have you watched yeah. the Premier it's, League? Like, yeah. I think it's like, the is Premier it League fault, has or is it Fox no fault? commercials. Like... The Premier League has commercials during breaks. NASCAR has Good these mind. things called stage cautions and Good yellow flags as well. Uh, and then in the pre- like, I think the Premier League is the best example because they have full ad, like full screen ad breaks during the breaks, but during the game they just go to they just pop it up. They have little pop up ads that just pop up on the screen, and it's like, like here's NASCAR a little side non-stop. by side. It's like NASCAR nonstop. Oh my god. Yeah. Thing that they have. They could have just kept that the whole race. It's this. just like I get it, you're trying to sell sponsors, you know, you need that money, you need that dollar dollar off the TV deal, but it's we live in a day and a age lot of where commercial, things man. are commercials are avoidable and people prioritize services that avoid commercials the most. So when you try to promote your product of racing and you show them race for three laps at Daytona and go back to Liberty Mutual for the 15th time, you know what I mean? Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. It's like, come on, man. Like, I want to watch the race cars. I'm specifically never purchasing from Liberty Mutual if I have to see that stupid emu ever again. It's just, (laughs) it it was so frustrating. I couldn't believe it. I, I had, we, me, me and Vito watching the race here, we turned it off. (laughs) <laughs> we couldn't do it we couldn't do it anymore we went and found oh, insane, we really? went and found the international stream that doesn't have ad breaks it's that bad damn yeah. that's crazy damn I didn't know that like if anybody out there listens to this show which isn't many but if anybody out there is a major stat head and wants to go through the suffering I really want to see a statistical rundown of the runtime of a NASCAR race and how much is taken up with ad space because I know they have these numbers at Fox and NBC, especially Fox. We just never release them. But they're never going to show that. Mm-hmm. And I want to know. No. I'm curious. I want to see how much of NASCAR are we losing when we when we go to Probably commercials. Probably a good chunk. I think anything over 25% would be a crime. Weird yeah. thing, right? Like, Is imagine that... watching the NFL and they go to commercials for 30 seconds between downs. That's how it feels. Yeah. Oh, third down. You know, it's like, here we go. Break. Coming up with third and four. This could be the game. And then, liberty, liberty. It's like, no, you know? Fuck <laughs> you. Come on, yeah. man. Ugh. However, I would like to go into a little bit of a good thing I liked about Fox this weekend yeah. and on. Tony Stewart did great. 
I'm excited yeah. for Matt Kenseth next week. I'm excited for Danica Patrick those two weeks after. And then I'm excited for Tony Stewart to come back at Coda. I'm very excited yeah. with what they're doing with these driver rotations with the with the booth. I do yeah. think I that think was the interesting. Booth is really good. It's really fun. The I'm camera cuts with that. and the camera shots are horrible because there's way too many close-ups and onboards that don't show what's actually happening on the racetrack. And we miss Rex because of it. And then the big granddaddy of them all to me was just the amount of ads like goodness yeah. gracious! Yeah. Like to note, one hundred percent of a NASCAR broadcast is an advertisement. You are literally always being advertised, though. Yeah, I mean the cars are just big billboards. Cars are billboards on wheels. You are always being advertised, though. I don't need more commercials. I fucking, I bought Wendy's today because of the Wendy's pit stop segment. Oh, when they're like showing <laughs> Kurt Busch, when they're like showing Kurt Busch, it'll have like Monster Energy all over the screen, shit like that. Yeah, it's like that's that. Yeah, that seems you like a really good incentive too. to get to the teams. Like, wow, what if we were like, hey, if you sponsor our race car, it'll go on the TV broadcast, and when it's on the TV broadcast, we'll put your logos on the screen. That's crazy. Hey, no, they gotta get there. They gotta get like. I mean, we have the green flag is sponsored by American Ethanol. We got Credit yeah. One, one to go. We got the Sunoco checkered flag. We have stage breaks. We have the Geico restart zone. Start zone. We have just Liberty Mutual out the ass. We got <sighs> Coca-Cola. We got just mountain. <laughs> God forbid we ever find the mountains of Bush. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the Bush is like, now. They Tracing. run so many ads, and they're all the same. There's like eight ads, and they're in rotation of fours every single ad break. That <laughs> happens every five minutes. <coughs> yeah. And that's not me saying every five minutes as like, uh, oh, it's just every five minutes. No, it literally, I think you could start a clock, and they come on every five seconds or five minutes. It's a travesty, man. Like, how are we supposed Lord to enjoy Ash, this? everybody. Like DoorDash? DoorDash. You like, yeah, Door you like Liberty Mutual. <laughs> Liberty Mutual. And then the hey, guy gets out God. and is like, I got to thank my discount tire bass pro shop Coca-Cola racing machine powered by Ford down at the pork rind shop. It's like, you know, we got enough sponsors on the screen. I'm wearing a damn Wonderhead hat on the set. Like, we got sponsors. It's part of NASCAR. Can we please get less ads? Because nobody's going to yeah. want to watch this shit if they're not a diehard. You know, that's my yeah, that's yeah, my exactly. that's my statement on the thing. Like, if you're gonna want to get people involved and they're gonna sit down and try to enjoy this race and they can't even take in what's happening because the by the three minutes they get to critically think about what's happening on the screen and see if they enjoy it or not, they have another advertisement to wait through. As, oh God, I mean, a lot of a lot of. Can ads, we get NASCAR? Like, why don't we just have like? Why don't we just start like? Why don't we get ahead of the curve and have streaming? Stream oh, that'd the broadcast. be crazy. NASCAR we says like, the streaming service. We just stream the international stream that they already have, and you just pay for it. You get no ads. Yeah, but yeah. they still do the TV one. You can still do the TV you one. You can watch it on comment. cable for all you old old heads out there that got to watch cable. I don't believe in it. But, hey, man, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Do it. But if you want to sit through all them ads, I don't want to sit through all them ads. I can't do it. <laughs> Worst part is I've that been, you can I've stream. been blessed by the future of modern day programming that is not ad just like out just like full screen ads out there like wazoo so you know i turn on nascar and i go oh <laughs> for half the year. like when i want to sit down half for year, i'm already sitting down to watch a three and a half hour circle car race i don't need advertisements every 15 minutes to make me want to turn it off more you know and i love yeah. nascar but man yeah anyway that's my that's Yay. my two cents. That's our I think if we just go tiring. NASCAR nonstop more and just get the full screen full screen ads under caution, I'm cool with that. Full screen ads yeah. at the stage breaks, I'm I, cool I with that too. I have an idea, right? They could do this like the NFL does, where it's like, okay, the caution's coming, the, the caution's out, right? You're playing commercials. Okay, if the commercial doesn't end here. Maybe like have it the car, uh, the pace car just go around one more time, like make it so that it lines up properly, like they do in the NFL, where there's like certain times and then it's back to the action and you're not missing anything. Because, like, if you do it during the caution laps and like say a commercial goes like 10 seconds too long or whatever over to where it would be like racing, you can just, you know, 
have them go around one more time. It's just one lap. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you can plan that ahead of time, too. Everything's in real time. We know. I just think NASCAR's got to get their hands out of the cookie jar a little bit when it comes to selling ad space because they've let it go too far, and I think the people are finally... It's been a recurring problem I've seen, like, you know, reading through the tropes of tweets that people are... Yeah, there are a lot not, of tweets It's about becoming that. more and more prominent that people are tired and tired and tired of ads, especially when we have access to motorsports on different streaming surfaces, such as, like, Flow Racing or just the Formula One broadcast on ESPN where you don't have ads. Mm-hmm. You know, you just, yeah. you pay up front. You don't, you know, you don't pay for F1, but you know, I mean, you pay for cable, you get ESPN. But like, I'm saying like, you know, you pay foot front on floor racing. They ain't got no ads. Worst part though, is that you do have NASCAR streaming service. It's at, at the fucking, whenever it goes over to NBC. Oh, oh hey, it's on Peacock. Peacock now. there's ads on the Peacock broadcast. So what makes you think there would be ads not on the Fox version of a streaming service? I'm saying NASCAR it, needs their own streaming service. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that would be a great thing I think that would be a great them. step forward. Because, I mean, Do streaming, you trust is, NASCAR streaming is the heads? future. It's inevitable. Can we please embrace the fact that streaming is where it's at? Yeah, because, really. I mean, there's still a lot of people out there that watch TV. But I'll tell you up front, I don't watch TV. I But I, I need to have cable because I watch sports. I watch racing and I watch football and I watch baseball. You know, I, I need to watch my sports. And where do I watch live yeah. sports? I watch it on TV. That's why I have live sports. When I want to watch Hulu a TV does show. not have live sports. Hulu does not have live sports. That is not true. I like to say that. That's something <laughs> that makes me mad. I'm going on my tangent here. Hulu does not have live sports. That is a fucking fake advertisement. <laughs> they have sports the day after. That advertisement for Hulu is fucking not true. They don't have live sports. <laughs> breaking. Thank you, Vito. All right. Fucking bye, man. Hulu this sponsorship. Is yeah, Hulu sponsorship. Odd, <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> Spin Hulu. Tunnel does not endorse Hulu. <laughs> we do not associate ourselves with the green brand. Oh, oh man. Fucking trope. Okay. Well, anyway, I guess that kind of gives my thoughts on the Fox thing. I'm, I, I, I'm seeing yeah. it more and more. I'm glad that people are being more outspoken about it because it was, it was a travesty today. I gotta say that was, yeah, that was a I. nightmare. That was, that was bad. That's too much. Mm-hmm. They, they pushed it was a lot of time. shit, man. Especially for the one race of the year when the most amount of people that are just casuals are going to turn in. Like, come on, man. It's the Daytona 500. Like, like I get it. On. It's on one hand, it's the Daytona 500, so it needs to be. we got to sell all the ads because we're going to have so many people watching. But it's also like, how do we get people enjoying this that want to come back and watch it every week? You know? Yeah, because there's, there's Cause more if you're races. coming back now, it's like watching it. NASCAR every so often, and then you just watch paid programming. And that's that's that's... I don't know if anybody's ever sat down and put on TV and been, ooh, I want to watch the commercials. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like the Super Bowl. Except those oh. assholes that go to Super Bowl party. Oh, I love the it's commercials at the Super Bowl. I'm a fucking they go to sealed retard. <laughs> they go to Super Bowl parties, and they're like, I'm only here for commercials. And then when the game's on, they make the game miserable for everybody Shut else. Up. Either. Yeah, you don't invite you. Do you know I'm Please. only here for the commercials, guys. I'm only here for the commercials. Even just commercials, guys like. hitting each other. Why do you like this? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, <laughs> like, so, um, I guess Fox. <laughs> this is a good segue. We'll just get off this topic because it's it's gone. You know, we get the it's gonna go on, on for a while. This is gonna we can keep going. Segment. It'll probably come back. We should. We, we'll keep well, a good. We'll keep a watch. The we'll Fox. Return. The Fox next ad next watch. Week. We'll be. We'll be. We'll talk about it after Auto Club next week. I guarantee. Anyway. Let's move on to Xfinity, because we had an Xfinity oh race. My now here on oh Spin Tunnel, my God. Here on Spin Tunnel, we usually don't talk about the lower series. We might throw them up in passing, but we don't really make it a big deal. But I think today, it being Daytona opening weekend, it's a good time to talk about it. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. My Snyder went My flying. Snyder! I thought that was the only blowover we were going to see this weekend, and then we saw one today. But yesterday, wow. Holy shit. That dude blew over, yeah. backflipped it into the damn fence. He tried to kill. He almost got Michael Jordan with collateral. Like, that was fucking insane. It was a hit on Michael Jordan's life. Yeah. I mean, oh my boy God. did a backflip. Yeah, just an insane wreck. I uh, The engine was, was gonna... gone. The drive shaft, I don't know if y'all saw the Randy the Plumber video, but the funniest quote I saw of it was, the damn drive shaft is driving itself. It's just rolling away on the track. <laughs> I was watching that race in the car. Shout out and, Randy the uh, Plumber. We love you. 
<laughs> I wasn't driving, don't worry. I'm a responsible driver. But shower. I was watching that race in the car. And uh, I saw, I'm like, holy shit. And the driver's like, what? I'm like, they're fucking flipping into the wall. And <laughs> like, I'm just like. <laughs> I mean, that car, that that many- car t- spun around, did a backflip, hit the fence, and just absolutely disintegrated. Yeah. Like, it was the out of the car, and it, it almost cleared the fence. I don't know if y'all saw that picture. I think that was the most torn up I've seen a car since Newman at the 03 500. Mm, I don't know. That was that was very reminiscent like, of Kyle Larson in 2013. That is true. The it Larson 2013. Larson really hit the fence and it ripped the whole front end out. But it also threw like wheels and shit into the crowd and about killed some people. So that was kind of scary. Yeah. I was a little more. Maybe that wreck. Also, the engine was gone. Because. Because he, we were very close to something even more scary. Because obviously it was scary that he, you know, but he almost twisted he again. Back and on got, the track, it would have been fucking terrible. Well, yeah, but he almost twisted again and got Newman. He was really close. Yeah, to, like, exactly. Falling That's sideways. what I'm saying. Like he almost landed back on the yeah, track. Yeah, if he which fell really down bad. in a different, like if he fell quicker to the ground, he would have pre- he would have got smacked roof first. Mm-hmm. It was almost even worse, but luckily that did not happen. Yeah, he walked away with his sore foot, basically, and that's about it. I mean, thinking about it in my mind, I think that would look even... That would probably look even worse than the Newman right. Oh, yeah, it would, definitely. Because we got a car doing a backflip into the fence that already ripped itself apart, and then he got hit. Newman head mm-hmm. on the wall yeah. really, really hard. Um, But... That didn't know, happen. That, that catch fence ripping you from, like, 195 to zero in a matter of 20 feet is kind of scary. Mm-hmm. It does do its job, though. But I mean, yeah, there was parts of his car went through like the front of Michael Jordan's bus or whoever's bus yeah. that was out there. Like there was parts hanging in the fence. There was parts through the bus. There was a whole truck arm went through uh, Gigi Yaley's car. And then God, one other man. guy, I think it was the 44 or something, hit the engine like block head on and just blew the whole front end off that car. Oh, it was the five. It was the five. Oh, it was the five. Okay. Yeah. Who's in the five? Matt Mills? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, wanna, Jesus. I, I, know, I know they don't have onboard cameras, but I really would have, I would kill to see Jade Buford's onboard camera. Yeah, that car just flying over him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would look like, remember Stewart's God. onboard from the 2015 night race at Daytona when Austin Dillon flew over him? Oh, yeah. Mm. God, I, I, it would be like great that. to at least get a look at what it was like in that car because, oh my God. But I mean that flight, was that man. was nuts. That was an insane Wait, crash. I just got an update from Bob Pockers. Tech inspection is complete. Austin Cindric here at Daytona 500. Okay, wow. good. <laughs> wow. Right. Okay, yeah. I made right a joke before, earlier saying, yeah. "What if he just failed inspection in the middle of the show?" Yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. It's just like, oh, oops. <laughs> they got damn it, we lose though. <laughs> That's, that's good to see. Yeah, that's Jeff good. Hey, Cindric. you know what? Good job. Austin Cendrick, officially official rookie Daytona, Daytona 500. 500. Winner. Good for him, man. Good kid. That's anyway, great. Speaking of uh, first time like winners, uh, Austin Hill. Austin Hill, first race in Xfinity. I'm happy for him. First I'm race in RCR in Xfinity. Just rolls up, wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't need to talk shit about him because we just talked about him wrecking. But Myatt Snyder was not very good in the two last year. We all know this. Yeah, uh, that's kind of, again, I hate to say it because, you know, that was a bad wreck he was in yesterday, but he really was not good when he was with RCR. Uh, and it's, it's free in Austin Hill. I think this is a new era. I think I think Richard Childress Racing is going to go back to contending for titles. I don't know if either of them are going to make the championship four. I have my I four. Think I think there's a chance we see Creed there. I think there's Creed a very there. high chance. They're both going to be fast. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. they're, I they're think stats more the trucks, Creed, if we learned anything from them in the trucks is that they're both damn good, especially Creed. Yeah, yeah, Creed's a great driver. I'm expecting I good things out of that kid. I'm open them changing <laughs> right now. I have Almendinger, Gibbs, Gregson, and Hemrick, but I could see that changing to a, at least an RCR guy. Maybe Barry, I could see making a, a shot at it. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised Hemrick. you didn't mention Allgaier. Yeah, all guy or two, all guy or two. I don't know. I think I mean, I'm he's only excited. ever missed championship for once. I'm excited for the Xfinity field this year. It, it's going to be competitive. I mean, like last year was yeah. great. This year, I think could be even better. Honestly, no, like even making it into the playoffs, we got this really year is good be drivers tough. and really good cars, and it's going to be. 
I mean, I think the top 12 that make the playoffs are all going to be, could maybe even win the title, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like, even making it into the playoffs. The guys at Colleague, the guys at Junior Motorsports, the guys at Gibbs, the guys at RCR. Right there, that's 12 cars, right? Yeah, I don't mean to. I know this is going to be then a very unpopular opinion. Then you have some wild cards opinion. like Brandon Brown or like Riley Herbst that could pull something out. You know, it's it's going to be interesting this year. Yeah, you, funny you should mention him. There's going to be a very unpopular opinion, but uh, I do think we're going to see a, definitely a pretty solid year from Riley Herbst. I don't know if we're obviously like uh, not a ton of wins like Chase Briscoe. I think he can win a race, maybe two. I I am, again, I I don't have much faith in him because that kid's been in top equipment for. Three years now, I think it's three or four years, and he hasn't been able to do anything with it. You know, like when you're in the Gibbs car, everyone is winning around you, but you, that's an issue. Then you move over to another top team with Stuart Haas and still don't win, and don't even make it out of the first round of the playoffs. I feel like that's an issue, man. Granted, last year was a down year for Stuart Haas. Yeah, I know, but even then, it's like that car should have done better than, than it did, I think. He did have his moments. Like, I, I will say, you know, finishing third at Bristol night wasn't anything to scoff at. Yeah, but, exactly. But it's like, I don't know. It's just I, I don't have much faith in him anymore after the last couple of years is all. He's going to need to have more of those moments, and I think he's going to need to win at least once. Let's he will have to win in order to really even stay in the series, I feel like, at this point. Because, yeah. you know, I think he's running out of his luck with, uh, with his sponsors is all. You know what I wonder? I wonder if uh, maybe uh, if he doesn't, you know, perform well next year, we may see. I could see him and honestly Zane Smith just swapping rides. Zane Smith yeah, honestly like, Zane Smith. I, I guess we could go talk about trucks now, right? One? A little bit. Yeah, yeah I think it's a good segue. Yeah. A little bit. Zane Smith, man, that kid's got a lot of potential. Second like, year in a row, these front row cars, whether it's yeah. trucks or cub. Hey. Let me get a quick shout out to Front Row. They killed it this weekend. They were fastest mm-hmm. in practice sessions in Cup. Zane Smith wins the truck race for them. And then they have both their cars running in the top 10 most of the day. McDowell finishing in the top 10. Todd Gillen getting wrecked out in someone else's mess, unfortunately, in the last parts of the race. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they, 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 they ran great they today. They ran great this weekend. Like, on all fronts. Yeah. I was very, very impressed. Was yeah, awesome. really. Look at Zane awesome. Smith's burnout, and it was nearly identical to McDowell's burnout from last year. I just thought that was kind it of it really was. Or he's yeah, just kind of like falling down the banking. I want to mention me. Zane Smith real quick. That kid flew under the radar yet last. You know, like he just kind of barely scraped into the playoffs, but then he won Martin, and it's like, uh oh, he's got a shot at the title, and he finished second. This is the second year in a row he did that. Now he comes straight out the gate winning at Daytona. I think this kid has a lot of potential, and I think he's probably the best driver Ford has in the system. Like, I see a, I see something happening for this kid in the future just because right now, like, who else is there? He, Herbst and Deegan, you know? Like, if I was a I think, betting I think man, he's got a lot. If I was a betting man, and thank God I'm not because I would have made some really bad bets in the past, but – <laughs> I would say Zane Smith is going to find himself in a Stuart Haas ride, whether it's the 10 or the 4, he's going to find himself in a Stuart Haas ride. Yeah, Man. I think so. Penske's good where they're at. I think yeah. he will end up in a Haas ride in the future because they're going to have some vacancies soon. Mm-hmm. Whether it's for Xfinity or it's in Cup, they will have a vacancy soon at some point. Honestly, what are your thoughts on the map? On... Which matter? Which one? I feel bad for a guy like Corey. Zane Smith. Oh, yeah, no. I'm very excited for him. I think he's going to do great. Mm-hmm. I think this front row truck program is going to be fun to watch because you know, they only got five people working on it. But Yeah, well, they did great last year. Yeah. I was looking, at, I was looking through some stats. Todd Gillen had the second highest average finish out of any driver last year in yeah, the truck series. Yeah, and then we, we moved that into now Zane Smith. I think we see a good rising star here. I mean, we've been watching him as a rising star. That's known, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, but this could be the year. This, this who knows? Could, I, trucks are gonna be fun. Yeah. Yep. Let's talk about another guy in trucks. He's not running full time, but Corey Heim was really fast until he got kind of caught up, and I think it was uh, somebody else's mess, if I remember correctly. He was probably. Really quick. I have a lot of faith in him because you know, Toyota as a whole is just really interesting to me right now because you have like. These guys who, like, you can just, like, sort of put the pieces together into your head as to who they're, like, maybe going to replace. 
if that makes sense. Like John Hunter Nemechek, like you can see him going to the 45, maybe Ty Gibbs to, you know, whichever Gibbs guy leaves first. And then it's like you just kind of sort of put the pieces together that way. And Corey Haim, I mean, he was running, I think, in the top three. I think he was leading at one point until he got caught up in that wreck kind of on pit road, I, I think it was, with Dean Thompson. And, uh, yeah, yeah that's he ruined his race. But, uh, yeah, he was, like, sort of, like, the only foil to Ty Gibbs last year in Arca. So, I, I don't know if he's going to be as good as Ty Gibbs, but expectations uh, that, kid, are- that kid's got something. I think he'll yeah. probably be somewhere in the future. I don't, I don't think we'll – I don't think this will be the last of uh, Corey Heim. He's running six more truck races, so we'll see what he does. Mm-hmm. I don't remember where they are, but we're hoping they're not just pl- – I'm, I'm hoping he's not just, like – you know, Talladega is one of them. You know, I'd rather it be like five, like, you know, different kind of di- uh, disciplines to see where he really is at. But very excited for him. Yeah. Yeah, the trucks are going to be fun this year. Nemechek ran really good at the um, tunnel race. Like, Nemechek ran, ran great, just got taken out at the end. That that wreck at the end of that truck race, that was big. Yeah, the like, big one. They ran green yeah. most of the day. No issues. They ran green straight through, and then that the last two laps, it was a mess. Yeah, I mean, Zane Smith almost had it taken away from him, but he didn't. Oh my god, I would, I would. He was about so bad five feet from the line, and then it was like, <gasps> there goes thirty-five cars. <laughs> they were so clean all day. And then yeah, like, Kyle Busch's shirt was proven right. Most expensive yep. day of the year. I love that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those. I want to wear it on Daytona weekend. That'd be cool. I think that's. I guess. I mean, I guess pretty that's much it everything. For that. We'll just go well, back to. There was one thing. Our predictions. Our bad predictions. <laughs> what do you mean? They're they're perfect. We're right on. Me, right. Chris, and Brandon had Brad Keselowski winning the Daytona 500. Vito had Kevin Harvick. It was Austin Sindrick. So. I would not say it was a bad prediction to pick Keselowski because he was up front. All day, yeah, and and even Harvey won the came duel. In the end, there came Kevin Harvick was running third in line, putting himself in position, and then he got. I think we made just wrecked. solid picks. It didn't come out in the end. Yeah, next week we have I have Kyle Busch, Brandon has Kyle like Larson, Chris has Kyle Busch, and Vito has Mister Austin Dillon. So which we'll is a very out of, box, right? out of the I, box. Out of the box, Question. I got it. No, he'll win it. He'll win it. I'll be the first one. <laughs> All right. You know what, man? You do you, man. I'm going to be pulling yeah. for Michael McDowell, though. I'm not pulling for any of my picks. I'm pulling for Michael McDowell next weekend. Hell yeah. That's all season. the biggest Michael McDowell fan in existence. All season, I will be the, the biggest. I will be the biggest Michael McDowell give fan. You, uh, yeah, I think, I think we, sh- we can give you the honor of being Michael McDowell fan. Yeah. Congratulations. I think that is an honor, isn't it? I mean, he may be one of the, like the top five biggest Michael McDowell fans on the planet. I mean, like... Just probably just only how many McDowell fans there are. Hey, all you Michael McDowell yeah. fans out there, chime in. Let us know where hey, you're yeah. at. Let's, let's get a call. Let's, let's start a call. Make your voices heard. Let's Make your voices cult. heard. Rip you sit. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, when he wins McDowell Bristol fans Night. Out there. When he wins Bristol Night. When he wins Bristol Night, I'll buy laugh. you a five-star steakhouse dinner. I'll take you out. I'll fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop. Uh, he'll win. I'll drop. I'll he drop. Will. Fucking big money on your steakhouse dinner when Michael McDowell. Tell that one over hell, yo. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, but man, good Daytona 500. Really good Daytona 500. Good race. Yeah, awesome race. Good race. Good winner. Feel good story. Hope to see more Crazy. of Big Bad Brad. A great balance between awesome, intense racing strategy and pure chaos. Across the board, looking at you, yep. Snyder, you crazy man. But <laughs> hate commercials. We hate, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we hate commercials. That's the that's what it boils down to. Awesome race. Today's broadcast. Fuck the commercials. God, that was so bad. <laughs> <sighs> it is what it is. Like, we uh, covered it all. Like, I think so. I think that's it. I really, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I got. I don't know about y'all. That's all I got. Let's start wrapping up. You know, behold your peace. 
think we're right. good here. All right, I guess we'll take you home here. So um, thank you to anybody that tuned into the live show. The uh, the show is going to go up on the YouTube channel. You can go back and listen to it. Tell your friends. Um, Please. We'll be back for next week's race after Auto Club. Uh, should be an exciting one. It'll be cool to see the two-miler for however long it lasts. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, thanks for tuning in. I uh, oh. hope you enjoyed the race. I know we all did. And we'll see you next Woody week. Head. We're Spin Tunnel, Oops. and you're not. Goodbye. <laughs>